What's going on? Today we're talking CarPlay MMI in this SUV. CJ, thanks for the car. And if you guys already ordered and have your MMI Prime ready, keep your eyes peeled because you're going to learn how to install it into your X5. Hey Beamer Tech crew and welcome back to another video. I'm going to show you a list of the tools that we recommend for this install. I definitely recommend picking up a Beamer Tech trim tool kit as it'll prevent you from marring up your surfaces. So looking at the MMI Prime when you open the box, you're first greeted by the MMI Prime itself. And next below that, we have the plug and play harness. Followed by the Wi-Fi antenna, the USB AV harness, and the video out cable. And if you wanna know all the features and functions that this offers, check out the links in the description and you'll see the other videos that we've made. To get the install rolling, let's first adjust the steering wheel so it gives us enough space to remove the first piece of trim. Following that, we'll go ahead and disconnect the negative terminal on the battery. You'll need to remove the five 8mm hex head screws in order to get to the battery. With the screws set aside for later, you can go ahead and lift up on the bin, revealing the battery. Here's the negative terminal we'll be removing with a 10 millimeter deep socket. You can even use a 10 millimeter crescent wrench or box end wrench if you don't have one. Lay the terminal on the side so you can reconnect it later. Let's go ahead and start removing some trim. Around this cluster, you can see there's a plastic black trim that you need to remove. Just use your pry tool. Next, we'll remove the air vent trim that houses the temperature control, caution lights, door locks, and also the start switch. Just above and behind the start switch is where you can start prying. You can use your hand to give it some more space and pry away. Then slowly work your way over towards the passenger side. With the panel removed, let's go ahead and unplug the climate control. Simply squeeze and pull. With the caution lights and door lock buttons, there's a cable that is kind of weaved inside. I recommend with this chassis that you actually push the button towards you so you can get better access to the wires. It's as simple as turning a sandwich bag inside out. Just pull it towards you, then squeeze the connector and pull. Moving right along, let's go ahead and disconnect the start switch. Squeeze and pull the connector. Now we're going to remove these two T20 Torx screws so we can remove this control panel and unplug the cables from behind it. And just below the control panel, there is a small piece of trim that needs to be removed. With that set aside for later, now to remove the control panel, simply pry it towards you, releasing the clips on the back. With the top portion freed, I recommend using two hands to remove the bottom. Let's go ahead and remove these connectors. Flip it around, and you'll notice there is a slide lock on each. There's a lock pin that you have to press down to release the slider. Just do the same for both. So set the cables out of the way, then remove these two T20 torque screws. But first, let's put down a protective rag to protect our surfaces from any marring.
Carefully pulling out the head unit, we're going to flip it over so we can get to the quadra lock on the back. In order to release the quadra lock harness, you're going to have to squeeze the sides and then pry it out. Next, we're going to relocate these fiber optic cables using a small flathead screwdriver. You can see the lock tab just has to be lifted up slightly, just enough to let the fiber optic cables be released. There you have it. We're going to need a little bit more slack on this fiber optic cable, so we'll need to unwind or cut away the electrical cable and or fabric tape that's holding the wires together. Let's grab our Beamer Tech plug and play harness so we can plug it into the head unit. The harness is made excellently and looks like it's straight from the factory. Before we plug the plug and play harness into the head unit, let's grab the OEM harness and plug it into the Beamer Tech harness. First, release the quadra lock. Double check and make sure the pins line up correctly and then go ahead and make your connection. Next, we'll grab our fiber optic cable and plug them into the corresponding ports. Now we'll release the lock on the Beamer Tech plug and play harness and then plug it into the head unit. Once the pins line up correctly, go ahead and lock it in place. Now we'll plug the harness into the MMI Prime box. Just make sure the lock pins are facing up. With that plugged in, then we'll go ahead and get things ready to run the Beamer Tech LCD monitor jumper. When plugging in the monitor cable, make sure you're plugging in the straight angled connector into the LCD out, as the right angle connector runs up to the monitor. Next, we'll run the other end of the cable up through the head unit plastic housing. You can see where my fingers are poking through. Just follow this path. Next, we're gonna follow the same path as the existing monitor cable, like so. With the new cable ran, let's plug in the Wi-Fi antenna and run that to where it goes as well. It's a twist lock connector, so you need to just plug it in and spin it tightly. Let's go ahead and follow the same path as the monitor cable. There's a perfect spot right here on top of the housing that will stick the Wi-Fi antenna onto. We'll then neatly wind the cable around and dress it in place so that it can stay out of the way. Be sure to allow enough slack on the Wi-Fi antenna cable so the head unit can move freely when you install it back in place. Pull off the protective tape and stick it down nicely. With that done, we'll go ahead and plug in our USB AV harness. Making sure to let the USB hang loose below the head unit so we can leave it out to use later. Plug the AV harness in, again with the log tab facing up. And then we'll go ahead and dress the cable. Now we need to remove these two T20 torque screws so we can get to the back of the monitor. Set the screws aside for later, and then all I need to do is pry up on the monitor, we'll spin it around, press the lock tab, grab a pry tool, and carefully wiggle it free. Next, we'll need to swap out these two cables. Remove the OEM monitor cable, then we'll run up the Beamer Tech cable. Just follow the same path as the OEM cable. With the cable swapped, we can go ahead and plug in the new cable. And secure the monitor back in place.
now we'll run the OEM monitor cable down to the MMI Prime location. You're basically working backwards from what we just ran. Now we're ready to plug it into the MMI Prime box. We'll want to make sure the dip switches are set according to the table of information on the bottom of the box. With that all done, there's a perfect spot underneath and behind the housing of the head unit that the head unit slides into, having the connectors facing towards the bumper and the dip switches facing towards the driver. Before screwing in the head unit, you may want to try and see if everything fits comfortably beforehand. And we'll make sure the USB cable has enough slack as well. With all that done, go ahead and secure the head unit in place. Then get your control panel, plug the cables back in, and put it back into place. Line the clips up properly and firmly press until you feel it snap into place. We'll do the same with the bottom panel as well. Then you can screw down the control panel with the two T20 screws you set aside earlier. Continuing to work in reverse order, we'll go ahead and put the air vent and the remainder equipment back into place. With everything plugged in, you can snap this panel back into place by pressing firmly until you feel the clips snap into place securely. And lastly, put the cluster trim in as well. Like everything else, line up the clips and press firmly. Job well done. Hook the battery terminal back up and you can go ahead and start up your car. Give the vehicle a moment to allow power to run through the MMI box prior to pressing down the menu button to switch into the MMI screen. As a quick connection guide, you can go ahead and plug in your iOS device and follow the prompts to use the CarPlay functions. The iOS icon will turn green prior to connecting. And that's all there is to it. It was a pretty easy install and it looks great. The CarPlay MMI Prime works with all the standard iOS apps available with CarPlay. Apple Music, Spotify, Waze, Google Maps, Apple Maps, etc. As you can see here, the standard functions with Siri work as well. Hey Siri, show me the nearest gas station. And if you downloaded the correct apps, Android Auto works well too. To connect to wireless Apple CarPlay, within your MMI menu, go into Settings, select Wireless Devices, then select Wireless CarPlay Pairing, Highlight Start Search, select it, and make sure you're in your Bluetooth menu in your phone and your phone will pop up on the MMI menu. Then select your Apple device, a CarPlay profile that will be highlighted. Once you select that profile, your phone will start prompting you to connect to Apple CarPlay. Follow the prompts and allow it to connect and you'll be good to go. And I'm going to show you guys how to create a shortcut using your number pad on your control panel. Navigate within the multimedia submenu, then scroll down and select external devices, then scroll up to your aux front input, and what you'll do is without clicking in the number 8 button, simply rest your finger on the button itself, and it'll give you an option to set it as a shortcut for that input. And then you'll press and hold it until it's assigned to switch automatically to your aux front input, which will switch over to your MMI Prime. And to verify the feature has been assigned, press and hold your menu button on the iDrive controller to switch back to the head unit menu, and then hover again over the number eight and see if it's assigned, and you'll be good to go. With everything installed successfully, this X5 can now go on its way and enjoy many moments of pit stops and road trips ahead with more than enough features. If you have any further questions or concerns about this installation, feel free to hit us up at our Beamer Tech website or give our support team a call. Once again, guys, my name is Chaz. Thanks for sticking around and watching this video. If you happen to have any questions, let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to see the latest videos that we got here at the shop. See you next time.